Now, there may be, there have to be more questions than just one. Yes, jump up there and holler at us. Randy Nichols, class of 75. Now he has a microphone. Hi there. Um, talking about campuses, um, the number of other large, prestigious institutions that have opened and developed campuses, international campuses, um, is large, but most are closing now, or many are closing now. Um, given your discussions of the international centers, plus, uh, plus um, what we have to the north, um, how, how does that all fit together in yeah. our global version? Yeah. I'm glad vision. you asked it, and I would have gone on, I just didn't, I've tried to make sure my answers are brief and short, but of course I'm, I'm desirous of talking endlessly. I gave you our strategy. Our strategy is, we don't know enough about the world, let's get our students and faculty out there able to work on the world and understand it. That's our strategy. The strategy of other institutions, a uh, number of other institutions, is different. Let's set up a branch campus in another country and have separate students and a separate faculty, and then we'll kind of have a network of these around the world. That's the strategy of Qatar and, and Education City, where Cornell and Northwestern and, and Georgetown all have uh, little operations. That's the strategy of NYU and Abu Dhabi, where they're setting up a campus, and that's the strategy of Yale and Singapore, where they're setting up a campus. We decided not to do that for several reasons very quickly. Uh, number one, you tend to go only where the money is, and uh, that's why people are in Abu Dhabi and Qatar and Singapore, uh, and they're not in Nairobi and, um, and Mumbai. Um, secondly, we think it doesn't address the basic problem, which is we don't know enough about the world. It's not we should go teach the world uh, how uh, to do things. We need to learn more and be out there so it doesn't match our sense of what the issues are. Uh, and lastly, we're not at all sure we can control for quality as we uh, would span, uh, expand the student body and the faculty. And some of the studies that we've done have indicated that what you were, what you were predicting was going to happen. And, and that's why Lee created the Global Centers the way he did. And they've been inexpensive to start and enormously effective right off the bat. In fact, some of the trustees were worried about the investment and even that. And that's just paid off big time. More questions? Yes. Hello. Okay. Uh, my name is Fernando Multedo. I, am, I have a master's from Teachers College in Education, of course, of 1991, and a doctoral in Education from uh, 97, yes. And I run the club, the Alumni Club in Rio de Janeiro. It's a very small staff, me and my wife, and uh, I bring good news and bad news. Good news are that the campus of Columbia University, our most uh, uh, loved uh, campus, is developing faster than most people think. In Rio de Janeiro, we already have the Studio X, which is a branch of the Architectural Graduate School of Architecture here, and is fully operational since March. And also, um, we have plans for the next global center that should be operational uh, next year. Uh, with Tom Tribat and uh, Dean Coatsworth. Um, well, the campus is expanding and uh, the alumni they are gathering together. We are receiving money from people who are not alumni or they're not uh, uh, involved with Columbia directly just because they recognize the importance of having part of Columbia University due to its reputation there in Rio. Um, Ike Batista just gave almost $1 million to get Global Center in Rio uh, uh, moving. But uh, uh, the bad news are, in this very moment, there are people, alumni in Rio, that want to give to Colombia and help the Global Center in Rio, and there's nothing set. We do not know who we send the checks to. There is no uh, checking account. There is no... So Fred, Fred, come on up here right now. I want to uh, stand up. I want him to see you. See that big guy right there? He has he has a pocket so full please of cards. Help He's going to give them to you. Please help us. There are a lot of alumni that would like to give and contribute to Columbia, in Rio, whether here in New York That's or great. not. 
Thank you very much. Thank we you. accept. So, so that's right. Fred, Fred, walk back there. <laughs> so we do, uh, we do absolutely have plans to open up a, a center in Rio, and that will probably happen the year after uh, this academic year. And uh, just let me say that Mark Wigley, Dean of the School of Architecture Urban Planning, has been leading uh, the school in setting up what uh, the gentleman referred to as Studio X's uh, in lots of places right around where we have global centers. Again, on the same theory, that to be a great architect or urban planner in the modern world, you have to understand uh, the world out there, and you've got to be there to do that. So it's a great, uh, great enterprise. More questions? It's a, yes, sir. By the, by the time you shout your name out there, somebody will be right after you with the microphone. Todd Drupsamen, uh, Columbia Business School, class of 99. Um, just a, a planning question. Uh, unfortunately, not quite as happy as that one, but uh, but I think very relevant. Um, in the uh, we had two very difficult economic periods in the 1930s and the 1970s, which had a very challenging consequence for Columbia University because of our relationship to the financial services community community in New York. Could you just uh, go over briefly the differences between Columbia now and then and how we are prepared for the difficult financial situation we're facing now, and if there are any advantages or disadvantages as a result of the you know, last 20, 30 years? Well, I think, um, again, I, I was here uh, with my wife, Jean, as we were very, very young and um, uh, experienced New York City from um, not a standpoint of poverty, but it was, uh, it was pretty close. And, um, and so we were here for 68 to 72 and, and had a feel for the effect on Columbia of the decline of New York City. And uh, I, I won't really speak about uh, the health, economic health of New York City. I think it's much stronger than it was then. Uh, I think we, but uh, that, that's for another time. I think there are several things that are really important and really different. We could not have created Manhattanville for Columbia if we did not have, and we've worked on this really hard, a better relationship with our surrounding communities and with Harlem in particular. Uh, this project was not uncontroversial to have a new campus in Harlem. Uh, my belief was right from the beginning that we needed to embrace our community, we needed to embrace where we are. There were some people who wanted us to move down to Midtown and build a, a new facilities there. My view was that, why would we want to do that? I mean, the, the last thing we would want is a university that's uh, disaggregated. And what a spectacular thing to, to be as part of Harlem. I mean, there's a great, great community, set of communities in, in Harlem. There's a magic uh, about it. There's a there's an energy, there's a, a beauty about it, and there's also the issues that we should face. And uh, we have set out to, uh, to uh, try to, to build much better relations of all kinds, public service, community service, but also academic ventures, uh, and drawing on the strengths uh, of where we are. With that, I say that because I think if we have an economic downturn in the city, we have stronger base with which to, uh, to maintain good relations uh, there, because that, that got really strained, as we know, in that period. I think the other thing is we, we've, uh, we've, we've taken care of our resources better. Uh, and I don't want to criticize people in that period, but, but we, we are, as we've said about the endowment, the way we, have related to, uh, to uh, alums and the success that's brought us financially, uh, as well as many other ways, means I think we have a stronger foundation uh, with which to sustain uh, a, a downturn in the economy. Uh, we did have a big downturn. I, I think Columbia came out of it better than almost any other university uh, I know of in, in lots of ways. We've suffered, no question about it. Uh, and there are a lot of people in the institution have, who have borne uh, the, the cost of that, uh, but, but it's been better than, than other places. So I, I'm, I, I'm, st I'm very optimistic uh, for Columbia's future, very optimistic, 
even with uh, a, a period of downturn. So let, let me add just a couple things to that. On, you know, one, and, and Lee's very humble about this, he's put together a management team that without peer in, 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 in the university world. And believe me, I get around quite a bit. The quality people right now that manage the, the financial and operational side are just as good as the people who are uh, managing the pedagogical, the teaching side. So he's got quite a staff of, of strong operational financial people who make sure that we're spending our money wisely. Second is, as far as the business school is concerned, it's broadened the, the, it, its curriculum enormously. And if you, myself, I come back from the West, I live in, 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 in uh, Silicon Valley, I come back quite a bit and do some courses here. I mean, uh, visiting professor-like things where I come in and do that. And believe me, they're not in finance. You know, these are all in, in uh, you know, high-tech entrepreneurship, high-tech marketing, <laughs> things like that that are, that are broader. So, you know, I think that, that you're, you're looking at a business school that's broadened its base, and I'd say that there are more um, interdisciplinary courses you know, initiated in the business school with other parts of the university than almost any place that we have on, on our campus. And the law school, if uh, David Schizer would hear, he could cite statistics well over 90% of students are getting jobs even at this very difficult time. Uh, people in the administration, Robert Kasdan and Sullivan and so on, have just done great, great work in, in helping us manage our resources.